Welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. We had a fabulous demonstration yesterday by Shobha Swami, who made five oil-free, sugar-free, Indian, and vegan chutneys. And today she is going to make other recipes with them. She's going to do some Indian snacks that are also oil-free, sugar-free, and vegan. And we're so excited to welcome her back to the show. This was such a fun idea to do. Uh Oh, she went away. (laughs) You have disappeared, my friend. She was just there a minute ago, and I can't do this by myself. I can neither see her nor hear her. Oh, brother. I hope you'll come back. Am I live, Charles? Yes. I'm live, but my guest isn't here. So what do we do? I don't know. We could start again. You guys, have anything? No, oh. hold on. Can you hear me now? I can. Yeah? Yeah. What happened? Okay, perfect. Yeah. I don't know. Some some messages popped up on my screen that needed uh, okay. taken care of. But you're, but you're sideways now. So it, it always helps if you put your phone in airplane mode, but you are sideways now. I'm glad to have you back, even though you're sideways. Okay, hold on just a second. Airplane mode done. And uh, yeah, now am I okay? Yes, Yes, you're perfect. Now now. it's looking okay. Thank you. And you just have to click this. Is it okay now? Yeah. It is fine. It is perfect. Thank you. Now good? Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Technical glitch. It's always happens. Ah, I'm so glad to have you back. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chef AJ. Namaste and welcome, everybody. And it's an honor to be here. Uh, yesterday, like Chef AJ mentioned, we made five different chutneys. Um, and today we are going to use those chutneys and show you how we can make five different oil-free snacks. So come join me. Traditionally, all these are made with oil, but... Uh, Today, we'll start with the most popular of all, um, and it's from India. It's called bhel. And bhel is typically a mixture of um, a little bit of cooked, but a lot more raw. Cucumbers, carrots, um, onions, cilantro, and uh, sprouts, perhaps. So it's a mixture of various different raw vegetables and a few cooked, maybe a cooked potato or something in between. And... They add just a little bit of uh, Indian rice krispies uh, to it and then add the chutneys. So the chutneys are what give it the flavor. So today we have a different, a slight variation on that. It's called sprouted bale. And so we've got all the different vegetables. You will be surprised to know that we are putting in 15 different vegetables. So Leah, pass me. So uh, you can see, um, I've got them all ready. There's yellow zucchini. There's bell peppers, three different types of. Uh, oh, you, you froze. Friends yard and carrot and beetroot and uh, greens, spinach. And I've flavored it with a little bit of mint and then two different kinds of sprouts. We can talk more about this. These are mung bean sprouts, which we make at home. And then these are moot sprouts that was also made at home. And I'll show you how to make them at home really in a simple and easy way. But we are, we are calling this a variation on the bhel with nothing fried. And it's called sprouted bhel. Okay. So all we do is add like a couple of tablespoons of green moong sprouts, couple of tablespoons of moot, greens, of course, I will add all of it. Spinach I had. And then carrots, just a couple of tablespoons. We could, you could add more. If the kids want more, you can add more. And then beets, we add chopped tomatoes to this. You can add anything you like, you know, edamame, anything you like. Red cabbage. So this is typically what my salad looks like on a daily basis. Bell peppers, three of them. Yellow, orange, red. Okay, and then cucumbers, then yellow squash, anything you can eat raw, you can put in there. Did you know that you can eat choyotes raw? And we use that quite a bit in India. It grows in India as well. Green onions. 
and green cabbage. So I add anything that you can eat raw, you add this, and then you typically just mix it all together, give it a nice swirl. And uh, I have chopped tomatoes here. That gives it a little bit of, you know, liquid and nice. Add lots of chopped tomatoes as much as you want. So this is called sprouted bhel. You mix it and add the two chutneys. So here's my green chutney and the sweet chutney that I made. These are the traditional chutneys that we make. So I'll add like maybe a whole teaspoon of this, maybe more, depending on how spicy you like it. You can always adjust. And then um, add a couple of teaspoons of the sweet sauce. Maybe one teaspoon is good to start with. So we mix it all together. And then, of course, you can always top it off with more uh, chutney for adults if they like it more spicy. If kids don't like it spicy, you can just make it with the sweet chutney. So this is what is um, called sprouted bhel. And then all you would do is, you know, plate it. Have a nice bowl and have a big bowl because this is, you know, primarily just all salad material. So add all of this to it. And then traditionally it's topped off with fried, uh, what is called save. It's a small, minute, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a fried dish that they add on top to add some crunch. But today I've made, I make this uh, savory mixture at home, uh, which probably we can come back again to show how you make it. It's like a snack mix. And this mixture is very popular all across India. Everybody loves, but everything in that mixture is deep fried. But I have a different variation of it made with uh, brown rice, uh, rice krispies, sugar-free rice krispies. So, and I add uh, all the yummy things like uh, mm, sunflower seeds, uh, pumpkin seeds, a little bit of cashew, little bit of everything is just dry roasted peanuts raisins so it adds a nice crunch and i add those chickpeas too the roasted chickpeas in this so it adds a nice crunch and typically this is how you make the bhel and you add a little bit of uh, chopped cilantro on top and then top it off just for show just chop it off with a little bit of chutney green chutney and a little bit of this a dollop on top and this is it. This is good to go. This is how the bhel looks. And uh, it's, an, it's a whole meal by itself. Everybody loves this from children to adults to elders. So this is an amazing thing. And we are so happy to present to you this uh, sprouted bhel. Okay. And the most popular street food in India. You know, this is what people eat on Fridays and Saturdays when they want to go out. Then they want to have bhel typically it's the healthiest form uh, oh she froze is she frozen and the second oh frozen again just for a second it froze but you're back okay cool so the second thing i'm going to make is another street food called the vada pav so the vada the pav is just uh, slices of bread i have them here so it could be these small uh, whole wheat buns or slider buns. So we can get this at the grocery store. Just find the ones that are oil-free, sugar-free. And uh, But the uh, vada itself is typically made with uh, potatoes. So we boil a potato, peel it, and then make a nice mash out of it. So we mash it with the potato masher. And I've all I've added is, a um, little bit of spices. So the same spices that we used yesterday, a little bit of, uh, instead of red chilies, I've used green chilies here, chopped green chilies, a little bit of ginger and lots of cilantro and of course a little bit of salt. So you mix all this and make a, it's like a mashed potato, little flavor. That's all. Think of it that way. So once that is ready, I make them into balls like this. So once these balls are ready, I'll show you exactly what's done after these balls are ready. We make a batter. And this is the important part. This is where I want to go slow and show you exactly what we do with this batter. Hmm. So 
here's what I have is chickpea flour. That's all. It's it's regular chickpea flour. We call it besan uh, in in Hindi. So I take maybe four tablespoons of chickpea flour. Okay, two one tablespoon of rice flour. This is just plain rice flour. You can use brown rice flour. You can use any other kind of rice flour you get at the store. Traditionally, we just get this rice flour at the Indian store and we just stock it up. And then we uh, flavor it with the same things. A little bit of turmeric, just a hint. And then a little bit of spice it up, red chili powder. Uh, you must have guessed by now we spice up everything with these two. And of course, salt. Um, just so, want to comment from Sunita. Salt. You could make the salt free as well. And remember I mentioned remember I mentioned these carom seeds yesterday? They aid in digestion and uh, they really help um, digest this uh, chickpea flour really well so you don't have any gas or bloating or anything. And these are called carom seeds. So you mix all of this together and use a little bit of water. I just want to read a comment, if it's okay, from Sunita, who says, uh, Bahel, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, is my favorite healthy Indian snack, which I make all the time. It brings back memory of my Mumbai. Can, can you hear me, Shoba? I don't think she can. Nahi, freeze. I think you're frozen again. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, good. Did yeah, you hear frozen for a little bit, but now I'm good. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if you heard the comment I read from Sunita, but that's okay. Yes. You said, no, you, I did. You said, okay. It's her favorite thing. Bale is her favorite thing to make uh, and, and eat. Yeah. And this is a really good, healthy version of it. So if you've taken four tablespoons of chickpea flour, you would use two tablespoons of water. Okay, we start with two tablespoons of water. You don't want it too liquidy. And then thereafter, add water just in tablespoons full. You, if you have it too runny, then it just doesn't work out. So this is very important because I'm going to show you two, three different um, uh, uh, dishes that I make just with this chickpea flour and this combination. Thanks, Sunita. Yeah, so the sprouted bale is, is a new thing that we have made. We make at home all the time. And uh, uh, in the evenings, if you don't feel like fixing dinner, this is what we eat. Imagine that. So it's almost coming together. I'll need now just a teaspoon. And I'll show you what the consistency is once I get it all going. I need a spatula, I think. And uh, I thought I had one here. Not really. Here it is. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Gives it a better. I sifted my chickpea flour to remove all lumps. Uh, that's just a tip. If you can do that, that'll be really good. And if you can bring the uh, camera closer, that'll be nice. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the consistency. I just added a little water so we could coat things really nicely. So I'll show you in just a minute how this is comes out. It should be on the thicker side. Typically what they do is make this batter and then deep fry in oil. But since we are not using oil, this is how you would keep the batter. Hmm? I hope you can all see it. Okay. Keep it on the thicker side. You can always add a tablespoon of water or so. So I'll use two forks. Okay. And uh, remember these mashed potato, uh, flavored mashed potato uh, balls that we have kept ready. So what we would do is just take this and then coat it nicely. Maybe you want to zoom in. If you can zoom in, that would be nice. Yeah. And lift it up a bit the bottom all the way yeah yeah you got it yeah yeah so this is how we coat this and then what do we do with this let me move this and show you exactly what we do with this instead of deep frying it i'll put this as well in the batter so i clear out more room here 
then move this out of the way. Uh, yeah. So I'll be using an induction stove and then steaming it instead of deep frying it. Yeah. We'll be steaming it. And here's the here's a pan. All I've done is I've put maybe a cup or two of water at the bottom to steam. And then I have this steamer that everybody might have at home, especially if you're plant-based, these steamers come in really handy. So I have the steamer and I remove the center, um, you know, the handle part of it. And I have a banana leaf here. If you don't have banana leaves around you, you can use any leaf. Just wash them nicely. Maybe, you know, wash them with some baking soda perhaps and clean them out nicely. And it just helps so that it doesn't stick to the bottom. That's all. If you don't have banana leaves, you can set it out directly on that. It just makes washing a little bit difficult. These balls like this, dip it in the, yeah, there you go. So this is how we make this vada pav. It's one of the favorite street foods as well. It's very filling because it's got potatoes and eating just one or two vada pavs will fill you up for dinner or lunch or any one of this. Uh, we made this in preparation on Friday uh, and a trial run. And uh, this friend of mine who helped me, she took it back home and had vada pav for breakfast. Imagine that. So we can, can, you can never dream of that, having all these deep fried foods for breakfast. But this is how you'd steam it. And you'd steam it from eight to 10 minutes. So you just put the lid, get it to steam. And once it's steamed, it, it's all ready to go to assemble. We'll start uh, the assembling in just a bit once the steam's for about eight to 10 minutes. And I have it already made. So this is how it comes out. Once it's steamed, these are the ones that are ready to go. Once they're steamed, they look almost like the original, almost like the deep fried ones. Okay. And here are all the condiments that we use to assemble this together. Okay. Vada pav is a favorite and uh, it's, uh, it's a street food, especially in Bombay. And I think they are the ones who uh, made it really famous all over. So you would open up one of this, put a little bit of green chutney on one side. Okay. And generous if you like it, you know, spicy and hot. And then you would put a garlic and red chili chutney here. Just made of two things. Garlic, red chilies, and salt. That's about it. There's nothing else in this. Spread this out. And we can use the red bell pepper chutney that we made yesterday. We could use that too, you know. Um, just something to flavor it. So that's done. And then what we would do is warm this up and then flatten it just a bit like this. So it will burst out everywhere. Keep it in the center. And then uh, this is a very special dry chutney powder. We made all the wet chutneys, like salsa looking chutneys yesterday. This one is called a dry chutney powder. And it's special for vada pav. It's got peanuts in it, sesame seeds, coconut, and garlic. Those are the four main things. Of course, flavored with red chilies to add some spice and salt to salt it up. And then, so this, you just would put some on top like that. This is how it's made. Very pretty. And uh, this is how we would arrange it. So we would do the same with the other one. And it's an amazing street food. And uh, my friend here who's helping me tells me, we have to serve it with these green chilies. People like it really spicy. So they eat the raw chili on the side. Like they will take a bite of this uh, uh, Thai green chili. And then they'll take a bite of vada pav and then alternate between the two. Not for me, but uh, it's a choice. If you like it that spicy, like my brother would eat that spicy. I think my husband likes it that spicy too. So they all like really spicy food. And I'm not that fond of that spicy. I like the, you know, medium spicy. So just flatten this up and heat it up. And once it's steamed in the steamer, you can use it as is, or you can put it in the air fryer just a bit to like 
get it nice brown spots on top if you want. Okay. And we'll show you that in just a bit. But this is how you eat it. It's, it's almost like a burger. But it's our very famous vada pav. Okay. There you go. Well, that looks amazing. Okay. So this is a, uh, you know, a very popular dish and uh, people love it. And if we can make this whole foods plant-based without the oil, I'm sure we can have a whole um, restaurant that only sells these kind of snacks. We'd be doing really good. I'm telling you, I've thought about it a couple of times. Okay. So now we are going to show you the third thing on the list, cauliflower bhajiyas. And we're going to use the same batter I prepared. Huh. And uh, let me just get a bowl here to hold these forks. And so these are, uh, these are a kind, sometimes people call them pakoris, but uh, we call them bhajiyas because typically the difference between pakoris and bhajiyas Ajiyas are made of vegetables and it could be any vegetable. It could be zucchini, it could be um, onions, potatoes, um, chayote squash you can cut up in slices. So I have chopped up cauliflower like this and just dried it. Just make sure it's not wet. So you wash it, dry out the cauliflower and then chop it into florets like this. And then I use the same batter I used for the vada pav. And here's the consistency again. So all you have to do is use the same batter and drop a few of these in here, perhaps eight or 10. Some are big, some are small, it really doesn't matter. And then once you add enough in here, just slowly keep coating them. Just keep tossing and turning and they will coat really, really well. And if you think that the coating is too thick, you can add like a few drops of water, a few teaspoons of water, so it thins it down and coats it a little better. I think I'll do that today because it's, when it sits, when this uh, um, chickpea flour sits for a couple of seconds, it can get thick. So here it is. I'm adding just, you know, maybe two teaspoons of water and then it makes it all, you know, coat really well. This is an amazing snack. I make this for dinner some days and I eat the whole head of cauliflower just by myself. If my husband asks, he, he'll eat a couple probably. He's a rice eater, so he loves his rice in every meal. So I let him have his, but uh, I love this uh, cauliflower for dinner. Imagine that. Is everything going well, Chef AJ? Can you hear me? Have you got cut out? I, I can hear you fine. Everything's going okay. great except that you're there and I'm here and I don't get to taste okay, okay. this. I know. That's just the worst part about this, these kind of cooking demos. Okay. Yes. Somebody asked again about your apron. Yes, she is a PCRM Food for Life instructor. You can read all about her. Her bio is right below the YouTube video that you're watching. Yes, one Just a second, I'll be right back. I just uh, grabbing a pan from the air fryer. So just take a pan, I've lined it with the silicone sheet. And uh, all you have to do is pick up each of these uh, cauliflowers that's coated and drop it on the sheet. So here you go. These are my favorite. They're called pakodis. And these are very similar to onion rings. You know, the way you make it, very similar. But we don't have to go through all those layers of dipping in this and that and dredging them and in, in liquid batter and dry batter and all of this. There's no need to do all that. It's much faster. So that's why I like this so much more. I have made onion rings as well. It comes out good. But we make onion pakoras. We, we cut it into whole rings, smaller sized onions. And then coat them like this. And typically all of this is deep fried. And people love it. They have like a whole plate of it. And there's another dish that's really popular in India. It's called Gobi Manchurian. It's an Indo-Chinese dish. And kids love it. And you can serve it um, as a dish. 
you can even serve it as an appetizer with a toothpick so this is just a precursor on how that is made as well so you make this and it's the the gobi manchurian is a lot like uh, what is it called cauliflower buffalo wings a lot like that very similar so i have made for my morehouse class i have made these as cauliflower buffalo wings as well toss them in a sauce and all of that so it comes out really good you can even um, add a little bit of cornstarch like uh, like they do i think for for the buffalo wings and even for our uh, chinese uh, uh, gobi manchurian i was talking about it's the kids favorite you know so all you do is keep doing this and uh, bake it in the oven for 10 minutes air fry 400 10 minutes good to go and we'll whisk this away out it goes to the oven and we have this already ready and made and good to go they come out all hot and nice like this and uh, now what do you serve this with right same green chutney so this is used as a dip now so water it down a little more if you'd like and then typically people don't have the sweet chutney with this but if people like it you can always use this as a dip as well so it's made of tamarind and dates like we showed you yesterday and uh, this is used as a dipping sauce and you dip and you eat it it's amazing hot and it reheats very well so if i make a big batch of this i save some for the next day and then you can just toast it in the toast oven comes out crispy and toasty again so this these are called bhajias and this is cauliflower bhajias okay oh my god hey, why don't you just open a restaurant i know i wish i could just make these five things you know these five chutneys and these five snacks and have a restaurant just making this all day long i think there would be long lines outside so now we are going to be making um a very similar thing it's called pakodis and that's another thing that's very very popular everybody loves pakodis and uh, there's different different types of pakodis we make but typically the one that we make is here's here's i have a nice tray of this so what we can add i'll show you i've already got the so you can add anything but typically it's nice to add lots of onions to it it adds a nice flavor and it gets a little crispy in the um, oven so it's really nice you don't miss adding the onions if you don't eat onions or you have a problem with onions what you can do is uh, cut up cabbage in the same way thin and long strips and then use that okay and there are some people in india that don't eat onions or garlic and they can use cabbage instead so i have strips of zucchini here strips of red bell pepper here cilantro um you can grate carrots you can grate these vegetables also and add so i have this mixture already ready it's just a mishmash of all the different vegetables here so i'll be using you know some of this and then the best part is i'll be using all the the batter ingredients same batter ingredients all over again so remember i'm making these three dishes with the same kind of batter so i'll take a bowl and use a dry spoon add maybe a couple of tablespoons of again chickpea flour half a teaspoon of rice flour you know the rice flour makes it crispy that's the advantage of adding the rice flour you can do without it too but right rice flour just adds to the crisp little bit of salt little bit of chili powder add as much as you want you can even add uh, chopped chilies to this jalapenos if you want or of course keep it all together if it's too hot and then don't forget the turf carom seeds so make like a ice powder out of this and i don't add water yet because when you add the salt and when you add all of this to the to the vegetables the vegetables also already have some water or if you wash the vegetables and they're like slightly wet so i don't make a paste out of this what i do is i just sprinkle this on top 
for that much, I would use like two tablespoons and make it into a dry powdered paste like this. And then I'll add just a couple of teaspoons of water. This works out the best. There's a question for you. And it's yeah, from go ahead. Are you familiar with Ashtanga Yoga from Mysore, India? Yes, I am. From Patabi Joyce. Yes, they are all the stalwarts of yoga that we all rest our shoulders, we all uh, ride on their shoulders and we've learned so much from them. Yes, Patabi Joyce School of Yoga, yeah, Terrific. absolutely. And there's another question from Sunita. Could you please show your beautiful colorful sari at the end of the show? Oh, sure, I will, definitely, most certainly. Okay, and, so- and one, one more question. Do you ever use R-A-G-I, Raji flower or Ragi flower? Ragi flower? Um, yes, I do. I do use ragi flour. Just a second. Let me grab a mat and uh, something to put it in the baking, getting it ready for baking. Yeah. So um, I don't use ragi flour in these snacks, but I do use ragi flour. I make other things. I make ragi idlis. I think we should come back for idlis another day. I saw some comments in, in yesterday's post that people want me to come back and make idlis and dosas and uttapams. So you don't pack this too tightly or too dense. Um, leave some air pockets inside so that, you know, it becomes crispy. So every anywhere there's air pockets. So use a fork to fork it out and make sure the onions stick out a little bit. They become crispy and nice and uh, don't pile them too high. So it's, it's, it's very forgiving. I may be telling you all these tips and tricks and rules, but uh, they shouldn't make you nervous. It's, uh, it's very forgiving. Um, like, I, like I told you, my friend and I made this on Friday and uh, she had it for breakfast, these pakoris, as well as that vada pav that we were talking about. Imagine eating these, uh, these foods for breakfast. If you, if you tell any, anybody from India that you're doing this, they would be so surprised. Why are you eating fried food for breakfast? That cannot be healthy is what they'll be thinking. But ours has got made so much more healthier and, and hence can be eaten for breakfast as well. It's awesome. Um, here's a comment. If you would do a video on how to make the sauce for Gobi Manchurian, I would worship you for life. Oh, yeah. Yes, we can make the sauce for Gobi Manchurian. Definitely. We can make the whole we can make the whole show about some Chinese Indo Chinese food, Gobi Manchurian, then uh, Hakka noodles, of course, you know, with at least 12 vegetables. So that's and my signature actually is uh, Thai basil fried rice. Of course, uh, you know, no fried frying, just, uh, you know, sauteing. So here you go. So these are the pakoris. Keep them all together and then and then they and then bake them in the oven for again just eight to ten minutes till the, the edges turn crispy and slightly charred, then you're good to go. Okay. This goes in the oven as well. There you go. And uh, guess what comes out of the oven? Some looking like this. So these are the pakodis with carrots and spinach and cilantro and these onions and you they reheat really well okay and again these can be uh, served with green chutney and that sweet chutney that we're talking about so so this is how you would serve this and where did my sweet chutney go it's gone somewhere right here okay kids may dip it with the sweet chutney so here you go that's amazing. I take pictures. That is this effort. That is just your food looks so delicious. So it's really crispy, really nice, reheats well. It's amazing. And imagine eating, you know, street snack food for breakfast. So we are we are now down to how many things did we make? Can we recap? We already made four things. That's okay. Unbelievable. Yeah. So we made that bhel, the sprouted bhel. And we show all of it together. Then we made the vada pav. Then we made the cauliflower bhajiyas. 
and then now we made pakodis so what else do i have for you here i have what is called papri chaat papri chaat is also um very popular especially people people who don't want to eat too spicy a thing and it's got a little bit of yogurt on it so it's soothing and it's not as spicy so and it's it's amazing thing to put together because now i have everything already ready so papri chaat is papri means just little um little crackers or discs but traditionally these are deep fried again so but i got the mary gone crackers you um, i'm sure all of you know about it so i just got a box of those crackers to use in place of papri and then you assemble them really really beautifully so basically what you do is take a lot of these papris arrange them neatly maybe six or eight of them perhaps 10 so now we have 3 and 3 6 7 8 8 and see if we can fit a couple more here yeah there you go okay so and then we put a little bit of everything here so let's get a spoon and i have just cubed and boiled potatoes imagine that so this is pretty filling as well so you would just put a few potatoes like this on each one of the papri and it's almost reminds me of those uh, you know the cheesy nachos or uh, nacho supreme so it reminds me of that because you can pick up each of the papri and eat it or you can combine it all and eat it with a spoon and then these are black chickpeas which people may never have seen it's available at the indian grocery store just like the garbanzo beans and these are black garbanzo beans so you would put a couple of them on each you know this is how you dress it up and then what else then chop it off with a little bit of onions couple of raw onions okay then again you need i need my green and uh, sweet chutney here it is so you top off with these chutneys keep it at the back so you can see first you would always uh, use green chutney first so just a dollop just a small teeny weeny bit that's all it takes and then the sweet chutney just a drop on top of that okay and then i have this pretty looking um pomegranate seeds just to dress it up just to make it look colorful of course you can add many grated carrots and grated beets and any other vegetables if you want if you want to make it more healthy uh, i would add at least five different grated vegetables to this you know and then you top it off with what is called save like i mentioned it's deep fried but i have this rice crispy savory mix that i've made and so you just top it off like this on top of it and this is how you make these papri and i'll show you we have a plate already ready for you so here it comes you will not believe how colorful this looks and top it off with a little bit of cilantro you you could have a restaurant you could be a caterer you could be a personal chef you're incredible there's a question from sima is there a reason to use black garbanzos instead of regular um not tra really traditionally we make this sort of black garbanzo that's one thing and uh, they have a different taste flavor you should try it out you should make a uh, black garbanzo curry as well just like the garbanzo chole that we make you can make it out of black chole and it tastes really good it's very healthy um this is also festival food for us uh, for all our festivals we make this black garbanzo for some reason and and uh, it has a definitely a little bit of a different taste profile and it's very very tasty it has a different taste profile from the white garbanzo so try it out for anything auspicious and our uh, festivals we always make this black uh, uh, garbanzo all the way from north to south east to west everybody makes this for special occasions so and it's very healthy very good for you healthy as you know it's proteins so i should keep track of all these plates you know then i'll lose track of it in my kitchen and then i'll have to go find oh yeah this is an important part that uh, i didn't show you that we could add that we do usually add you make papri chaat like this and 
just add the green and the sweet chutneys or dahi papdi chaat also you get if you want it with yogurt we make the soy yogurt at home my husband is a yogurt fan and uh, we had to hold off being vegan till we find found out how to make the soy yogurt because we didn't quite know how to give up our regular cow's milk yogurt and once our dear friend uh, who's uh, who's a phd in chemistry he got working on it and found out how to make this uh, then the switch was rather easy so we would just you know drizzle some of this on top and it's already done on this oh boy don't freeze on me hun you're almost done is she frozen for you guys it's got to be her end because i did a zoom just a few minutes ago and be okay and instead of save i told you we added that dry rice crispy mix that i make at home that's my favorite what else are we missing that's it are we done we have time we have time i have one more thing this is what my daughter said that i should show okay so my daughters are both vegan first and then they became whole foods plant based so they are both whole foods plant based both of them interned at pcrm one of them worked at pcrm one of them interned at pcrm um and then one of them also interned at true north chef aj my um, my older daughter who's a doctor right now um she interned at true north as well for a month and uh, loved the experience yes she she was so inspired to go salt free she came back from true north and said i'm going to salt free it lasted about a month and then slowly scope creep a little bit of salt crept in you know so that's an interesting uh, experience that they have so this is just roasted corn i have gas uh, burners here and i just roasted this um to you know to get a few black spots and again our uh, handy dandy green chutney comes to uh the rescue so we would use like a brush something like this and then dip it in here take a little bit of chutney and then slather it and this is excellent street food too so my daughter said and it's called bhutta that's what we call it at home in in uh, in the north it's called bhutta and uh, imagine how how nice this looks and how flavorful that will be and uh, if you don't have green chutney you can roast the corn the same way and just add lime or lemon that or and red chili powder if you want and you can skip that it tastes amazing on this i skip the salt as well because typically they use a lot of salt what they do is they take a lemon uh, they dip it in salt and they dip it in red uh, 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 red chili powder and then smear it on this use the same lemon to smear the lemon as well as uh, the spices onto it but this chutney is really good for this and we can do this it reheats well you can keep this ready you can cut them into small discs for a party it's uh, it's an amazing party favor as well and i'm so glad i'm doing this uh, uh, snacks show chef aj everybody is getting ready for july 4th picnics and uh, all of this is very good picnic food especially the dal wow i right? just i just want to are you going to write a book oh remember you asked me this last time as well uh, yes i should i should take the time out to do that I, so I finished hope. products bring everything yeah one by one i'm going to bring everything together i will write a book i should sunita says Here's you're so organized <laughs> thank you sunita yeah she's she's probably driving somewhere and uh, thank you thank you for that compliment um, so here's the bhajiyas here's the vada pav do you and, make and uh, where is pakodis There's a question do you make P A A N I pani puri? Yeah, we could make that as well. That has a little bit of oil though and I'll I'll talk about that in just a bit. Give me just a minute let me get all these things together and the bhel. Yeah. Yeah. You can top this bhel off with uh uh what you call it? Uh onions too, raw onions. Let me move all this. I think they all This is uh, guess what this is does anybody know what this is i'm sure all all your viewers know what that is i don't even know what it is 
Oh, you will recognize it, Chef AJ. It's an onion bloom. It's beautiful. Yeah. So this friend of mine grew lots of green onion and I've used that in all of this today. And it came with a bloom. So I said, well, I'm going to use it. So stuck it in a vase that my daughter has made. She she used to, she makes pottery. So she's made that little vase. So I thought it fits perfectly in there. So we're all good to go. And uh, let me run over everything we made. This is the bhel, which had 15 different vegetables. Okay. And just a little bit of crunch on top. And this Rice crispy mixture that I've made, uh, you don't have to worry if you don't have it. All you have to do is add some uh, uh, sunflower seeds and some pumpkin seeds and maybe a teaspoon of peanuts, um, roasted peanuts, of course, and all of this roasted. So it will give you a nice crunch. So the bhel and the save that we use uh, in this bhel is primarily for that. So it uh, packs it up with lots of vegetables. Okay. So this is sprouted bhel for us. And then we made the vada pav, a whole meal by itself. Look at them. They look so cute. Sitting in like that with these little slider buns. And then we have the uh, cauliflower pakodi, uh, bhajiyas. And then mixed vegetables, spinach and cilantro pakodis. Okay. And papri chaat and uh, bhutta. So roasted corn. So this is our, uh, you know, snacks for today. All the five different, uh, five now, we got six, I think. I got this added in. I thought if I had time, I could add this in. And if we have a little bit of time, I can show the viewers how to make sprouts. Okay. So we get these green mung beans in, in the Indian grocery store. Um, they're small green uh, uh, beans. You soak them overnight. Um, in water, enough, enough water to fill and they swell up a little bit. So next morning, you would move them to a, a mason jar. And once you move them to a mason jar, um, I use this, uh, this mesh that, you know, garlic comes in a mesh like this. And sometimes, um, you know, other vegetables come in a mesh like this. So I just use, reuse that, save it and reuse that and put a rubber band around it. And so you empty out all the water and uh, leave the beans in there to sprout. Just a little bit of moisture that covers each of the beans is enough. So you just set it on the, on the countertop to, um, to sprout. And then a couple of days, all you do is uh, two times a day, you add water to it and then rinse it all out. Add water to it and rinse it all out. And then you can even keep it you know, upside down so for a while in your drainer. So it drains all the water. And uh, in about 24 hours, you'll get, especially in the summertime, it sprouts really fast. And you get this amazing, amazing sprouts. You know, they almost come up to an inch long. I know my friend Sunita makes the best sprouts. Her sprouts are really long and so huge. So, and that's the green moon sprouts. And I made that the same way. So you can, and then you can put a lid on it and store it in the refrigerator. So very easy. So uh, this is moot. This is a kind of uh, beans, again, available at the Indian store, M-O-T-H. That's what it's labeled as in the Indian grocery store. So buy, like, I think our, our, all our beans come in like four pound bags. So buy the four pound bag and make this on a weekly basis and you can alternate these. And then experiment with others. We have another thing, uh, just like the azuki beans, but much smaller, and they are really red chori, it's called, C-H-O-R-I, red chori, and they also sprout really well. So try experiment. Even these black uh, garbanzo beans sprout really well, and these are these moot is so sweet and so tasty, so also moon. This can be a good snack by itself as well, you know? You don't really need anything, you know? If you feel like really eating but not really hungry, that's a good thing to eat. And of course, it's loaded with proteins and the sprouting makes the uh, uh, vitamins and all the minerals uh, more easily made bioavailable for us more easily. So um, use that in your salads, use that. You can even cook with that and make dal out of that. You know, sprouted moong dal is also something that you lightly steam it and add onions and tomatoes and comes out really, really good. 
Well, consider that snacks. I mean, that those are meals, what you made, really. Yes. Yeah, you're right. I eat them for meals nowadays because it's whole foods, plant-based, zero oil and no sugar. So it's, uh, it's really, really fun to eat these as meals. Definitely. We, we are looking forward to having such a big spread. As soon as the show is over, we'll be snarfing. Oh, that's incredible. There was a request to see your sari. Oh, yes. So definitely. And uh, I'm heading off to another event right after this. So I thought I'd dress up and keep everything ready. So at three o'clock, I start driving. Here, should I move this whole thing away? Hold on just a minute. There you go. Uh, Made it. Wheel this away. Yeah, good enough. Yeah, can you see? Beautiful, just like you. You're such an excellent teacher. Thank you, Chef AJ. Oh, a friend of mine is asking me to do a swirl. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Namaste. She says very pretty, very pretty. Thank well, you. Thank you. This thank is my you. mother's sari. Yeah. Well, we would love to have yeah. you back. And an Idli show is a great idea. And somebody is asking for rice crisps as well. Okay, sure. We can do that. Absolutely. We can right. set up a time. Let's get you on the schedule again, because you're just wonderful and your food looks incredible. And I hope you will write a book. Okay, thanks. I will. I will. I have connected with Dylan. I want to let you know, and I will get started on writing the book. I hope Hopefully so. someone, someone who's watching and some of my friends and some of my support group people can help me because I know it's a lot of collating and a lot of collecting and a lot of getting pictures together there's there's a whole lot of work to go making a recipe book and I look forward to doing it definitely weren't you an engineer yes well I think think you'll be able to do this then (laughs) very true very true you're right you look wonderful your food's amazing and have a great time at your event thank you so much for doing these wonderful weekend shows and we'll have you back as soon as you're available to do an idli show sure we'll make idli Dosa and uttapam. I think that's what people were asking. And then I'll think of anything. And, and, and else then some kind think. of sauce, Manchurian, Google, some sauce somebody was asking. Manchurian sauce? Oh, or? yeah. We should have another show for that. And that's Indo Chinese. And we'll make uh, Gobi Manchurian and the Gobi Manchurian sauce that goes with it. And then we'll make Hakka noodles to go with it. And we'll think up of a couple of other. There's uh, baby corn fritters that they make. We could make that. So all of this is Indo-Chinese. So we could put an Indo-Chinese day together. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Shoba. You're just wonderful. Thank you, Chef AJ. You take care. You take care too. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back one hour earlier tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time when my guest is Mary McDougall.